How's it going guys? Welcome to another video and this is going to be a quick explanation on the differences between cores and threads in a computer CPU. So let's start with just the CPU itself. For example, let's say we have a four core CPU. Now each of these cores I like to think of as workers to explain this. So each process information, each perform tasks, each basically do what the operating system tells them to do. So the OS or the operating system is kind of like the boss and each core is a worker. So threads on the other hand, they're kind of like sequences of commands given to the cores. So you can think of threads as let's say conveyor belts of products being sent to the worker. Now that we understand like the general purpose of threads and cores, it's important to know the difference between what a physical core is and what a logical core is. So a physical core is kind of what it sounds like. It's physically on the CPU. It's the actual hardware on the CPU itself. A logical core is more like code. It exists in the computer, but it's in a sense, logical cores are basically the threads of the computer. So for example, if you have a processor with four cores and four threads, you'll have four logical cores. You'll, you also have four physical cores. That doesn't mean you have a total of eight. That means you have four and four. They're basically known as the same thing in that case. But now if you have a processor with four cores and eight threads, well then if you were asked how many logical cores do you have, you could say you have eight logical cores, but you still only have four physical ones. So the logical cores are basically the different, like the amount of pathways that your, C or that your computer has to process information. So you can think of it that way. So physical cores still remain four, but since you have eight threads, you actually have eight logical cores because there's eight ways for logic or you know information to get processed through your computer. All right, so now we got that out of the way. What happens when your CPU has more threads than its cores, like in that case? Well, this would be giving like a worker, in this case, two lines of conveyor belt products. So like they have two different conveyor belts in front of them with products going by. So for example, let's go back to the four core eight thread processor. This will have two threads per core. So each core can take on two different threads of commands. Now as for a single core, it can only have two threads to work from. So during normal operation, like CPU operations, usually you won't see continuous execution on a single thread. So there's these little small gaps existing that cause like downtime between it because the computer can be running into resource errors, or not errors, but like they're waiting on resources. So memory could be caching or other things can be happening to where the CPU isn't 100% active all the time. Now this is where the advantage of having that second thread comes from. So you might have only one core, but having the second thread gives the processor this efficiency. So while the core is in this downtime on the first thread, it can switch over to the second thread and work on another task. So then once it's resources for the first thread, it can go back. So it, get, it loses resources, so it's waiting on the computer to catch up, switches threads, goes, works on another one, and then comes back. So for in the case of the worker and the conveyor belt, this is basically like a worker running out of products on one line and turns over and starts working on products from another line while they wait for the other conveyor belt to catch up with more products. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of it. All the four cores will work simultaneously and this is called parallel operations, but the cores themselves can't work on multiple threads. So the cores themselves are gonna need a switch between, a, between single threads at a time. So the switching between these threads is what we call concurrent execution. So it mimics the parallel execution that each core is operating at. So obviously you're not gonna get the same efficiency as you would have, let's say, uh, a four core eight thread processor versus an eight core eight thread processor. That would be a little different, but you can see how multiple threads per core still help to get the full efficiency out of each core. They're not the same as an actual core, otherwise known as physical core, if you want to use that terminology, but they can, they can enhance performance by filling in all these little gaps of downtime and basically giving you the most efficient way of processing information. And that's basically it guys. Uh, I don't like going too in depth on these, so we're not gonna go into like actual data streaming and where the data goes, but I hope this helps understand or helps you understand the differences between a core and a thread. Cause sometimes they can get confusing and people are like, oh yeah, I got, you know, eight cores, logical processors, but it's really just their threads. Anyways, if you have any question guys, uh, please leave them below in the comments. I'll try to get to them. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Very much appreciated. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.